Hello and welcome to Big Picture. I am Vishal Dahiya and today we're going to talk about elections and social media. Now, the election season is once again around the corner. There are going to be assembly elections in the state of Bihar as well as bipoles in several assembly constituencies and a parliamentary constituency as well. Now, these are COVID times. We are in the middle of a pandemic. So in these particular times, the social media and its role becomes really, really important. Although the social media effect on elections has been quite evident since the last past few years, but in these elections, uh, it will be really significant and important to see as to how both the candidates, political parties uh, use social media for their campaigning and how does the public uh, react to that. Also comes in the role of Election Commission of India who is conducting these elections. We'll try and understand all aspects. And for more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests in the studio. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with Mr. Akshay Raut, former Director General of the Election Commission of India. We also have with us uh, Ms. Khushbu Jain, advocate and uh, cyber law expert. And we're also joined by Mr. Sanjay Singh, senior journalist, uh, who has been keeping a close watch on the political developments and how elections are contested as well as uh, voted in. Welcome all of you to Rajya Sabha TV and let me begin with you, Mr. Singh. Let's start by, you know, understanding this relationship between elections and social media. Uh, Vishal, uh, election this time around is very unique. In the sense, if you look at Bihar elections in the past, digital media, social media and whatever was electronic had very small role to play. Uh, so to say, I'll not go long into the past, but say uh, last elections, parliamentary elections and assembly elections in Bihar. Uh, see, social media largely in India, in terms of election management, means WhatsApp groups. Uh, this Twitter and Facebook, of course, are there. They are there. But in terms of reach, this WhatsApp groups actually communicate things very faster. What makes the difference? Earlier, it was generally one-way communication prior to advent of social and digital media. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a two-way communication. The subaltern people all around have got their voices and they express their voice. The time is very significant here. It communicates message very fast. But uh, the issue is how do people actually relate with social media? In the sense, people actually, most of the time, you have made up your mind as to which side you are supporting, which side you are not. In some case, some fence-sitters are there. What makes an election in, 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 in India, even if uh, that color was missing for last several uh, years or so to say decades, even then there was some color in the sense you had public rallies, you had people ca campaigning, you had other uh, forms of small uh, handbills and so on, people making different kind of nukkar sabhas, those would be missing. And okay. that is replaced by the digital uh, network outreach by political parties and leaders uh, at large. Uh, what happens, the people who have larger network and larger ideas in terms of penetration, uh, they get a mileage uh, in that. Uh, BJP has started their digital outreach much before anybody thought about it. Uh, Prime Minister had several meetings, uh, not actually political, but in terms of government initiatives that he was taking. Then you had Amit Shah holding uh, a virtual rally and uh, that way it goes on. But what actually makes a difference is that WhatsApp group and how many WhatsApp group one has created and how those groups is able and leaders uh, there are able to receive the communication or the feedback is, that is coming through those groups. Okay. Okay. Let me let me bring in Mr. Mr. Raut here. Mr. Raut, uh, you know... Uh, the big question here is from the point of view of the Election Commission of India as well, because uh, as uh, Mr. Sanjay Singh is pointing out, and we've seen that how social media, you know, uh, has become a force multiplier in these political contests, uh, specifically electoral contests. So in this situation and in these elections, the forthcoming ones, wherein social media is expected to play a very, very important role, what is the mechanism out there with the Election Commission of India to go ahead and ensure a free and fair election because all of us are aware about the menace of fake news as well. Yeah, Vishal, let me sort out the second part of your question first. Uh, I'm not sure if social media is going to play a large role in Bihar elections. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, compared to the national penetration of 50 plus percent of internet, Bihar has about 30 percent. And the smartphone penetration is that or even a little less. So I'm not sure if uh, political parties will really do a lot of wise thing by moving greatly into social media. But yes, because it's a pandemic affected election and virtual um, uh, campaigning is one of the ways that uh, they have to fall back on. So social media is likely to have a little larger role. In fact, in terms of mass media connectivity also, Bihar is not very high up among the states. That's one. So let's not put too many eggs in that basket of uh, social media. Okay. Yes, it has a role. And then I have gone through many studies about the voting behavior uh, that social media orchestrates. I think social media is just a fashion and style and people want to connect. But as Sanjay Ji rightly said, people have made up their minds uh, in for other reasons. And maybe political competition is one of them, major one among them. But social media, okay, it's a way of life. They like to be connected if they can. But I, uh, in terms of voting behavior, global uh, suggestions are that it's not doesn't determine much. But to the most important first question of yours, Vishal, about election management, election management had a very interesting relation with media and social media. Media is a natural ally. You know, in election time, a lot of things to be informed to the electorate. We are the largest electorate of the world. In fact, many countries put together. I don't have to call about the scale of the elections in India and particularly in Bihar, it is already 7.3 crore electorate. Okay. This is the largest fund, largest election after the pandemic came in in the world anywhere. So to connect to these people, tell them what, when and where of polling, media is a natural ally of election management. And social media gave hope a few decades back when it came. Election management people thought that they can easily connect to millions and millions of people. But soon this type of hope became fear. Because uh, I don't have to tell you even globally, the social media measures are being legislate, uh, are being called to legislative committees to whether it is uh, Facebook or Google. They are being asked to explain why certain wrong things are happening in our country. Even relating to COVID-19, there is plenty of bad social media. The footprint is so little. Election expenditure control finds it very challenging to measure the footprints and cost it. That is why during the last elections, not only there could be head posts, there could be fake news, but election commission has become very serious about it. Uh, more so during the last national election 2019 in which the commission was forced to almost extract from these uh, platforms a code of ethics. But code of ethics is a code of ethics. Model code of conduct is there which is very salutary and which has a lot of impact on political parties and process. But still, many times it is uh, the deviance is not able to be uh, made accountable, to be actioned upon. Mm -hmm. So now the social media measures have taken a voluntary ethics that they will not do X things, they will not do Y things, they will take their political advertisement as separate from other social media posts. They will take the conference of the uh, election commission. They will also do fact checks. They will do immediate withdrawal of any wrong thing. But as the in the last election announcement, which you just now referred to, election commission has made it clear that they will do a hot pursuit if things go to that extent that they find that election process is vitiated. Where else social media is doing, whether in Bollywood, property market, or elsewhere, elsewhere, that's none of the business of election management. Okay. But to the extent, to the extent, the vitiation of the uh, level playing field, I'm sure that election management in Bihar is going to really uh, tighten its screw on the social media. Okay, but 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 Mr. Okay. Raut, you, you spoke about you know uh, that how election commission said that you know they will pursue vigorously if at all there is uh, some sort of uh, you know wrong play as far as uh, use of social media is concerned. One question here I want to ask you is. Does the MCC has enough provisions? Is the election commission in terms of powers it has, you know, uh, adequately equipped to deal with these, uh, you know, new age changes uh, in terms of social media and the challenges which it brings with it? Like the government of the day or like other sectors in the society, generally election commission would tend to believe that uh, self-regulation is the best regulation for media, including social media. It takes technically social media as one of the electronic media. That is why it says that if electronic media is subjected to more the MCMC, Media Certification Committee and Monitoring Committee, mm -hmm. from which all electronic media has to take clearance before it puts out a political advertisement, so also social media. 
So they have put social media in the bracket of electronic media. But as you know, electronic media is also not sort of fully controlled or regulated. There is a section 126, which, which puts a shackle on any types of election related broadcast by electronic media, also by social media, 48 hours before the close of the election. Mm -hmm. So those will apply. And MCC has certain provisions which relate to media behavior. There is another media code also, I mean, a special media code which election commission circulates. And there are, they also relate to PCI. They also relate to the New Broadcasters Association. They depend on this. Now, for social media, they are interacting with their intermediaries and associations. And uh, for, particularly for the last few years, and more remarkably, during the last general election, uh, 2019. And it has given some results, I must tell you, because everyone has become conscious. There are fact checkers. There are violation checkers in the social media platforms. But in its own arrangement, Election Commission of India keeps an eagle's eye on the whole thing. They have a committee which will always change and scan every part of the social media to find if there is anything negative which could vitiate the process, uh, cause unrest, uh, disturb harmony, and cause a lot of difficulties for the mutual elections and candidates. So this is on, right? and I think okay. that type of scrutiny has to be there all the time. Okay, okay. Kushbu, your views on these two aspects, as Mr. Rauth is pointing out. One, obviously, you know, the provisions which are there in the law as well as the powers with the election commission, because social media, all of us know, is, uh, you know, are, are they're all dynamic platforms. And uh, things change uh, very quickly out there as well. And then that compounding effect is also there. Also, the, the you know, the point which Mr. Rauth is making that let's not uh, be ahead of our times. Perhaps in these elections in that particular state, of Bihar, we might not see too much penetration as far as social media is concerned. Do you agree? Um, no, I would not agree on that because, you know, uh, with, the, with the kind of uh, year we are facing and the kind of increase in on social media platforms or increase on digital platforms that has almost been more than, you know, it has increased. There is an increase of almost three to four hundred percentage, whereas your screen time is concerned. So looking at the kind of way we have shifted more towards the digital uh, uh, platforms for every news and every every reliability with, with, with you know, lockdown in place, with work from home. I would not agree with that completely because because I, I think we have, all of us have seen that <coughs> kind of impact Cambridge Analytica had where it comes to changing the mindset or moving moving the mindset of of voter base is concerned. Uh, at the same time, I would say that the lack uh, of any you know clear data protection framework. You know, we do have uh, data protection bill pending after K. Putta Swami and Justice Sri Krishna's committee. Uh, the framework is pending, and and, and you know the recent introduction of. Uh, uh, the framework by uh, Niti Aayog uh, in, in Rajya Sabha, which was uh, 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 the DEPA. So, uh, uh, looking at looking at you know looking at lack of this uh, data protection framework as of now, and which allows uh, unrestricted uh, access to data, personal data. Now, this personal data can be manipulated by political agents. This can be manipulated by different entities to spread targeted disinformation to to have your own propaganda. So, looking at you know that limited applicability of uh, of, of laws uh, when it comes to data protection bill, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, you know bringing in data brokers uh, uh, in the market, you know who are using your personal data uh, at a massive scale and, and and the purpose and and ambiguity space where is law is concerned over there. Uh, and at the same time, technology, which makes it ambiguous for anybody to understand. Looking at that aspect, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a need for that framework to come. At the same time, I would say that election commission or the laws which are in place, yes, they do talk about, I think Sir was very specifically talking about non-campaigning period, uh, you know, of 48 hours prior to the election. Uh, to monitor fake news, yes, there has been instances where you know uh, self-regulated uh, 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 and censorship of illegal content on social media platform, whereas elections are concerned, are being issued by the commission very specifically. Uh, uh, the entities, the, 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 the platforms have to have their self-regulation and censorship. But at the same time, looking at looking at you know the kind of uh, uh, technology we are talking about, we, uh, I mean, I would say that it's not yet equipped to deal with such digital propaganda as of now. Uh, it's not about the laws only, but it, it's, it's about the enforceability of the law also. So, so looking at that aspect, I said, as I, I feel there is a scope of regulated, uh, uh, you know, uh, scope of uh, law, and at the same time, scope of uh, there's there's a huge scope where is uh, 
uh, whereas applicability of these laws and uh, enforceability of these laws is concerned and at the same time we need to have more uh, clear regulation whereas content is concerned, where content is vague, whereas uh, you know absence of any clear legal basis is concerned, whereas uh, uh, amplification of any certain uh, you know specific uh, news is concerned that in okay. what manner it is being amplified. We are seeing bots in place, uh, uh, the way news, news, news form uh, opinions, yes I would say uh, I would rest on that. Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Sanjay, you know, uh, the penetration of social media or the uh, impact of social media on elections obviously can vary depending upon uh, various factors. But this particular aspect, as both Mr. Rauth and, uh, you know, Khushbu is pointing out, do you think that this combination of the self-regulation by the social media platforms, uh, the big ones, and the provisions in the MCC or the powers of the Election Commission, is this a good enough combination to deal with the kind of challenges which we might be facing uh, in these elections or in the future ones as well as far as social media's impact on election is concerned? Shal, there is no self-regulation on social media. I'm sorry, not to, uh, not to my understanding. But some, but some media, platforms have said that yeah, they will yeah. regulate themselves. The, the bigger platforms, they say that they have put in fact checkers or people who actually are going to censor or do that censoring thing. Their credentials itself by itself is questionable. So let us leave that part. And besides, if you put up something and something is really obnoxious, it takes a great deal of time to put uh, take that uh, down. Until then, the damage has been done. So generally, that social uh, uh, self-regulation is not there, least of all and WhatsApp and uh, Facebook and Twitter. Okay. Uh, that is also, also there is a bit of uh, debate on kind of agenda or motiva motivated things that are there. That's a separate debate. Uh, I would take off from, uh, take forward what uh, Akshay was saying. Look, we shall differentiate between the outreach of social media in these elections. Of course, these, this is going to be a watershed election in terms of the way digital media is going to play a role because that also has become a means of actual main campaigning, the tool of main campaign. It was a subsidiary in uh, last any of the election. Social media was a subsidiary or digital platforms were subsidiary. This time around, that is the main platform through which you are reaching out to the people. Uh, parties, of course, will make their own attempts. Uh, uh, the part that how much it plays on psyche of the voter, that's a different question altogether. Uh, the part it plays on psyche of the voter, I agree with uh, Akshaji because that part, uh, if that had been the case, Congress today, lately, as the Congress has picked up and so many other anti-Modi forces have picked up, they would have been assured of any victory in assembly, local and parliamentary. If you have seen leadership of Congress party, they are focused only on Twitter and so many uh, hashtags, handles that are hashtags, uh, promotions that are coming every day. Uh, so you see same set of people actually going there. So that part is actually very amplified. The issue is you cannot win a war, electoral war, with social media, unless you have a vast army of foot soldiers, you have yeah. strong delivery mechanism, you have strong mechanism, communication mechanism, who people believe in terms of leadership structure, and also your kind of the way you manage your elections, ultimately the way you put up your candidates, the way you stitch up alliances, and the way you go forward in last 40, 50 days, and prior to that, your own history. The elections are not fought and one in the last 50 days. It's a long drawn process. Yes, that final push, that last 5, 10, 10 overs in a uh, limited over match, that part is the election. These 30, 35 days election time is there. In terms of the first thing that I was talking about, in terms of the outreach, this is going to be a watershed election whereby new dimensions may be created for coming elections because leaders actually, they also get fatigued reaching out to people, uh, a senior leader, a top leader would uh, travel crisscross the whole state, five, ten rallies uh, across the day, through the day, mm -hmm. and also they have to look for election management, communicating to Carter, getting the feedback. So if this goes effectively, then elections next year and next elections forward, that part could be minimized. I'm not sure people actually want to see physical presence of the leader. In one of those programs, Akshaji was saying physical versus virtual. So that physical versus virtual, 
uh, the time coming time a month downwards say post uh, november 10 will be analyzing how much the physical versus actual or uh, this contest or say a situation has led us to okay okay obviously it's it's going to be really really interesting to see the kind of changes which might be there as far as you know uh, the, the the way of campaign is concerned uh, the way candidates and the po political parties go ahead and try and convince the voters and also this uh, this communication between the electorate and the candidates as well but uh, mr raut i'd like to bring you in here on this uh, you know thread of uh, what needs to be done in terms of uh, you know ensuring a free and fair election with this another element coming in and as uh, uh, mr sanjeev was pointing out you know this this whole idea of uh, bigger social media platform self regulating themselves uh, doesn't seem to be a really really very uh, you know strong one there yeah i we can't be that much pessimistic about self regulation i think uh, all the people who deal with media and practitioners of media including sanjay ji he himself is an eminent journalist i think everyone always believes that no one should regulate them they should regulate themselves but okay that's a, that's the point which has been discussed already i would not go to that i would go to something do you remember vishal that about 10 years back there was a huge talk about paid news right because i had occasion to handle it paid news was generally a process in the print media also it was getting into electronic media to some extent uh, social media when it appeared it changed the scenario altogether but then election commission no one everyone was talking to paid news because there was no like only circumstantial evidence was there no clinching evidence that someone mm -hmm. has done paid news it is a clandestine arrangement between someone who writes in the newspaper and pays money uh, the candidate who pays money mm -hmm. then election commission came in in bollywood it was a problem in property market it was a problem in stock market it was a problem no one was able to get into this so election commission got into this in whatever modest manner had discussions with all the stakeholders then had the mc mc in all districts media certification and monitoring committee which went did the laborious task of chasing and finding everything in the newspapers and then gave notices some candidates were disqualified sanjay ji everyone knows so this had some impact so there is no substitute to efforts now that's why i started saying that even the voluntary ethics that cannot substitute election commission's regulatory role and its oversight mm -hmm. its powers under article 324 to do anything to protect the fairness of the election that's one that is uh, the point okay. then second and just to finish it this particular matter please carry on i am i am concerned about social media not so much about voting behavior because i still hold on to the uh, limited influence in terms of voting behavior sanjay ji also made that point and there could be and we have technological uh, uh, also uh, technological limitations the last point on this was my serious concern about social media in election is not really that the voting behavior will be stolen no not that really because as i was giving an example the so called efficacy of onlineness in the online as sometimes becomes non line in a context of socio economic backwardness and technological de deprivation that we know and digital divide that we talked about but one concern is it can provoke a series of incidents at a very critical time mm -hmm. that happens on social media if something happens someone throws a dirt on social media you will find lot of series of offline activities which can disturb the election on the morning itself on the, i think election commission's one major concern is that the evening before that is why the necessity to keep a very close eye and make sure that nothing goes wrong because <laughs> that's something which is not acceptable in election that can create havoc and <laughs> mess up the law and order situation and create a situation in which elections may become untenable okay. that's one concern and i'm sure election management election commission with its experience and with its force and with the extent of personnel and powers can handle it oh definitely uh, you know ensuring conducive atmosphere during the election is the primary job uh, of the election commission as well and that is being done very regularly we've seen uh, let's have concluding comments from uh, khushboo here before we bring this to end khushboo in terms of what needs to be done as uh, mr raut is also pointing out you know there there seems to be uh, uh, an area where uh, uh, perhaps a lot has been done but we need to keep our eyes and ears open can't let our guard down as far as the impact of social media is concerned in you know to ensure the free and fair election i completely completely agree with uh, your uh, point of view you know when we talk about uh, uh, social media the the way it, uh, you know this 
regulated content is vague uh, uh, in the absence of any clear legal basis and and these platforms can censor or at the same time you know i'm talking about censorship also uh, there has been a lot of instances where they censor so at the time of censorship or at the time of amplifying certain information without credibility without accountability or without any transparency and especially when we talk about fake news which can have a very larger impact whereas you know the kind of uh, socio uh, uh, cultural uh, uh, linguistic you know uh, 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 environment whereas india is concerned and at the at the crucial time whereas election is concerned yes it can have a devastating effect uh, i would say that the kind of impact when when we talk about positivity about social media when we talk about you know negativity about the impact it has the same way it i think it moves uh, uh, in the positive manner also so yes we need to have uh, a dedicated fact checking machine which should, which should be so robust that you know it 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 has uh, uh, election commission can have dedicated platforms to look into that aspect and again at the same time it can be it can be uh, this information can again be amplified and can reach the mass at a very faster level i mean a very very basic example we have news channels who pick up news from twitter what has happened so so twitter's uh, you know these platforms reach is much higher than any other channel or any other mode so let's let us also use it in a in a positive manner any minute fact checking uh, you know uh, uh, system should be there to look into that if any minute misinformation there whose impact is after the amplification can be so used can be looked into it apart from that yes let's wait for uh, uh, dedicated laws which bring social media platforms also liable when such kind of conduct is happening on their platform and uh, after having an information or knowledge about it they do not act upon it because when we talk about internet uh, uh, the speed is of the light and mm -hmm. one has to have some uh, uh, credible some you know they have to have some responsibility i would just add one more point over here okay. that the aspect which we were talking about that linking of uh, you know the free speech is one thing but at the same time not everything is your right when it comes to you know you take away another person's right or when you when you act criminal so when we talk about uh, misinformation or fake information spreading these are very heinous crimes looking at the impact it has on the society or certain group or it can create riot kind of a situation so i would say linking it with your any of your dedicated uh, you know uh, uh, id cards your uh, acceptable uh, uh, identity cards would be one another good move because whenever such thing happen social media platform do not entertain when they entertain the end result for law enforcement agency comes to an extent that we do not have whose id this was so so you know it becomes you know that that space where when i can be anonymous uh, the crimes happen so i would okay. say that i'm not saying yeah okay okay so there it is uh, you know uh, some uh, suggestions as far as uh, uh, ensuring uh, the way social media and its effect uh, challenges out there can be tackled. Thank you, Kushbu, Mr. Sanjay Singh, as well as Mr. Akshay Raut for sharing your views with us and our viewers clearly as our panelists are pointing out. Uh, as far as social media is concerned, there are both aspects. The positive one being as to how it amplifies the entire political uh, you know, atmosphere out there in the electoral battle also acts as a mode of communication between uh, the electorate as well as the candidates and the political parties. But there are various challenges as well. And while the Election Commission of India is doing its best and deploying all means to ensure a free and fair election. Some amount of responsibility also lies with you and me to ensure that we use social media platforms very responsibly and do not indulge in spread of fake news. We'll come back again tomorrow with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha Television. Thank you.